Okay, the next thing we want to work on is stay. So stay means to freeze. Stay is the one she has a lot of trouble with, um, especially if we're in big distractions. So stay means to freeze. It means do not move until I release you. Okay, but don't ask her to stay if it's in a situation that like you just know she can't stay. Like it's just too hard. Um, Cause we don't want to set her up to fail. And it's not that she won't get there someday, she will, but she needs all those little baby steps that we, you know, are reinforcing that calm, still behavior. She needs to get that worked up more um, in higher distraction areas. So if, uh, say like when we were at the park, right? I could get her to stay sometimes, but it was really hard. So if somebody got too, too close to us, I'm going to uh, maybe release her, Maybe I'm just gonna ask for a sit and a touch and a watch me and maybe I back up and call her to come. I ask her to do other behaviors that are more movement driven than being still while there's this big distraction coming, okay? So practice your stays in low distraction areas. Slowly build it up. When we're doing stay, we slowly add in distance, duration, distraction. So a really good stay has all three of those things in it, right? We can go far away. We can hold it for, you know, five minutes, two minutes, 10 seconds. Uh, we can do it inside with no distractions, but also outside with big distractions. But we train each of those little things separately, okay? So if she is failing at her stays, we just gotta go, we're making it way too hard, okay? Um, so we're gonna start out super easy and then build it up in here. And again, if you're in a place where you just know it's, she's not gonna stay, just don't ask her. Ask her to do something else that she's capable of. Uh, come, and she'll get there. She'll eventually get where she's capable of holding this day, but not yet. Touch, good, come. Okay, so sit. So I'm gonna say stay, and my palm is up, right? So I'm not like this, like the down. It's gonna be up. Good girl, watch me. Stay. So now I'm just gonna slowly add a movement, right? So I'm just, th this is part of our distraction, right? It's just me moving around her. And on this day, I'll come back and reward her. Good girl, watch me. Stay, so I can remind her, but I don't wanna be chanting it, right? I don't wanna be saying stay, stay, stay. Just, just remind her if you need to. Now, if she started to look away, I would ask for her to watch me. Because at this point, I want to keep her eyes on me. Okay. Oops, I dropped straight. So when this day is over, I say, okay, and pat my leg. So that, that's our clear ending so that she knows she can get up. Now, in the house, I'm moving away. I'm going to do it again, but go out a little bit further. But now say we're somewhere and the distractions are higher. So if the distractions are higher, I'm not going to be trying to walk 10 feet away. Like that's gonna to be too hard. If distractions are high, I'm just gonna stand still and just reinforce her, be looking at her, be watching her, but I don't need to add in any of the extra stuff. Um, sometimes like actually just a while ago, I was practicing and the little pug was out here with us. So she was doing a stay with the pug right next to her or Sometimes my cat is walking through here, or my Cocker Spaniel, or my kids are playing. So a lot of times there's lots of other distractions going on and I'm gonna gauge, you know, I'll test out her stay, you know, can she stay even though the cat's over here rolling around on the floor? That might be way too high of a distraction so I stay in close to her, okay? Touch, do it again, good girl, stay. So sometimes she has a hard time when I turn my back and walk away, because that looks like I'm disengaging from her, right? Watch me, good girl, stay, doing things. So I maybe turn my back, maybe I raise my arms, maybe I stretch, good girl. Good, maybe I knock on a wall. Yes. Stay. That elicited barking from somebody else in the house. Maybe I touch my toe. Oh, uh uh. Stay. Right? I'm just adding baby distractions. I'm just trying to build it up. I'm seeing what she's capable of. 
but let me really see. Her. Okay. Now, if, if I'm doing something and she's getting up, she breaks her stay, I'm making it too hard. I go back and make it a little bit easier. So, you know, doing things like asking her to stay and going and sitting down on your bed or your couch, that's harder because your body's shifting, you know, into a downward position. So that might be hard. Doing a stay where you're actually opening the front door. You might need to work on that where you're just jiggling the door handle or looking through the peephole. So everything, you can build it up, build it up till she gets better. Okay, so now the next thing we're gonna work on is park it. And park it means like go over there and chill out. Go to your mat and chill out. So um, I brought her little bed out here, but I think it's helpful, especially in the beginning, if it's slightly raised. So if she's having to get on something, Later on, it doesn't matter as much, but I feel like it, it's like a mental game to them and it actually helps them to get on something. Um, another thing that can help is if I move my park it out, it kind of tells her that we're about to start training. We're about to start doing park it training. So I'm gonna move the bed. It's nice and toasty from being in front of the fire. Um, my cue for park it is pointing, looking where I want her to go. <laughs> Good girl. And now. She, uh, what I would like her to actually do is lay all the way down. Okay, so she'll tend to sit, um, but I'm really working on her trying to get on there and laying down. So relaxing a little bit more. So. Winnie, come. Good girl, watch me. Good girl, Winnie. Park it. Park it. Yes, okay. So I was just waiting her out a little bit. I'm tossing it right between her two front paws. Good. So now I can kind of move around and toss the treats over to her. Good girl, she got up on that one. So I'm gonna see if she'll re put herself you know, back into position. Make sure she didn't miss anything. Winnie, park it. Yes, waiting around to get right. I want. I could tell her to down, but there's really something to letting your dog figure it out on her own. So if she can come up with that idea of, uh, oh yeah, Cassandra likes it when I lay down, it'll make a big difference. Good girl. Okay, so this one I would build up duration. This is a great one to practice at going and sitting down somewhere and using her dog food and just kind of tossing it over to the mat. And if she gets up like she did, you could send her back over to park it, or you could wait and see if she chooses on her own to go lay down. Good girl. But the biggest thing here is that I'm sending her over and we're working on relaxing. Good girl. And I will not keep her here forever since this is a video. Okay. Good girl. She's like, oh, I don't want to get off of it. I don't want to get off of it. Right, Winnie. Yes, all right. So I'll, I'll let her hang out in the park. It. Um, so when she's been doing a lot of barking, I say quiet. So quiet is my just stop barking. But the deal with quiet is like for the dog, what does quiet mean, right? So sit means put your butt on the floor. Park it means go over there and lay down on that mat. It means something, but quiet is almost the absence of doing something. So when we ask, so this, if I'm giving a cue for quiet, I'll do this for quiet, okay? And I'll count it out, so I'll wait for her to relax a little bit, and then I might reward her for being quiet. Um, other things I try to notice is, you know, if she's in her crate and she's chilling out, I might come over and drop a treat in the crate for just rewarding her for laying there, right? When um, I keep her in my office a lot and there's a baby gate up, I'll reward her when I come by, and if she's just chilling out on the bed or whatever, I'll toss a treat over. Um, or praise her, or pet her, or come in and engage with her. Um, other times when she's been in her crate and she's like, rah, 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 barking, I don't let her out. 
Um, I might cover the crate. I might go, okay, if you're going to keep barking like that, then I'm going to, you know, it's a, I would consider it somewhat of a punishment because I'm taking away her view, right? So I cover the crate so it gets dark and um, gets chilled out more. Uh, when she comes out of her crate, you know, after she's been napping or in the mornings especially, if she's ever scratching at the crate or barking or jumping, but I know she needs to go out, right? In the mornings, I'm not going to cover her crate. Uh, I make her sit. So I ask for a sit or I ask for a watch me to come out of the crate. She has to not be barking and all four paws have to be on the floor before I'm going to open that crate. And sometimes I'll go to reach for the latch and she might go, oh, that, 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 right? And start scratching again. So I'm going to go, mm, take my hand off of the latch. You can ask her to do the calm behaviors or you can wait for her to offer you something else, but do not let her out of the crate if she is throwing a fit. So if she's barking, scratching, any of those kind of things, wait her out, ask her to sit, tell her what to do, uh, but don't let her out if she's scratching, barking. Reward calm behavior. Reward, let her know you love it when she's just being still and quiet and watching, being a good girl, right? Uh, there's a lot too, just telling our dogs when they're being good, letting them know how awesome they are. <laughs> They are chilled out. Good girl. Okay.